And good afternoon, everyone, and, and welcome to the coalition to remember the 1906 race massacre. We're amongst our group of co-chairs and advisors uh, as we um, set about planning for 2022 and, and looking over what we did this year. And so I just wanna take a moment and say, um, you know, that this end of the year season, hopefully it's you know, brought everyone to a safe place and we're excited about the possibilities for the for the new year. And uh, Trent is going to serve as our facilitator through through most of this. And um, I'll chime in under on certain slides. So uh, Trent with Star uh, will do that. And I'm representing Culture Centers International, the um, nonprofit that helped put on the remembrance, the 115th remembrance. So thank you, Trent. Okay, thank you, Candy. I appreciate it, Madam. Um, I just wanted to welcome you all again and, and uh, join voices with uh, Candy on that. Um, and um, also let you know that the meeting is being recorded. So if everybody's fine with that, the breakout that we do will not be recorded, uh, but this main uh, session is. Um, I want to take a second and introduce uh, Mr. Albert here. Uh, you see Mr. Fields, uh, and you heard his voice earlier. He is, to say the least, our master technician for this meeting, uh, allowing us to, to break out and move smoothly. And uh, uh, so I uh, just want to introduce him. And we'll tell you more about Albert uh, later. Uh, and the, the last piece on logistics is that uh, the bathrooms are in the back, down the hall, and mm. to the left somewhere. Okay, so if, if you have to uh, uh, escape, uh, you know where to go. Um, I just wanted to uh, say, uh, as a bottom line up front, as uh, we like to kind of say in the military, um, we we have everyone here has wor worked with the coalition this year and this is what the coalition looked like uh this is how the coalition started with the convening organizations and uh these are the primary member organizations uh that joined the work and supported the work in some way or another at the end of it, uh, our feedback has been that it was successful. And at the end of it, there was a consensus that the work should continue and that this should not be a one-time thing or every five-year thing or every 10-year thing, that it should continue on an annual basis. And so to that extent, we have asked you to reconvene one more time this, the, at, before the end of the year uh, to just talk about what that looks like. Um, and who are you? You are our, our fearless advisory uh, experts. Uh, most of you uh, who are here invited, even some who are not present, we're honorary co-chairs uh, for the, uh, for the uh, uh, program this year. And in addition to that, we have key leaders, key organizational leaders uh, and representatives that we've asked to give counsel, give guidance and direction, uh, particularly as it pertains to programming, support and funding uh, and strategic planning um, to, uh, to the coalition in, in its work. And so if you wondered, okay, why am I here? And who am I with? Uh, this is what we are calling uh, this, this group uh, that we've asked, asked you to be a part of. And finally, uh, a, a role that we would ask the members of the advisory group to play is to simply solve all of the world's problems. And uh, so we figured we got a good, good group of people to do that. <laughs> okay, so this is the point 
Uh, well, this is one point where you can say, well, I don't know if that's what I signed up for, I'm out. Uh, you may want to say that at the end of the meeting, but uh, just wanted to kind of frame uh, who it is that's here and who we uh, ask and why we ask you to come together. Um, with that being said, uh, we'd like for you to introduce yourselves uh, uh, quickly or, or briefly, take a minute to do self-introductions. Um, and if you would just, uh, I think most of us kind of know each other here, uh, but if you would, just your name, your title, uh, and your organization, and just a brief statement on your interest in the work of the 1906 Coalition. What is your organizational or personal interest? Uh, why are you vested in uh, the work of the coalition to recognize and remember the 1906 Atlanta race massacre. Uh, so with that being said, I guess we'll go around. Uh, and the person at my top left is Andrew Sheldon, if you would, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I was uh, an original um, co-chair of the 1906 100 year celebration with Saddam Awakil. Um, and I think that's how come I'm here. Uh, but now I'm primarily a painter interested in depicting <laughs> events from our awful past that I think people need to know about. And this is one of those events. Um, I've not painted anything about it, but some of my paintings were involved in the uh, event that happened a month or so ago. Um, and so that's primarily why I'm here. If I have any, any institutional memory to provide, I'll be glad to jump in. Okay. All right. Uh, Nikki. Hi, I'm Nikki Lazar, and I am a consultant for the National Center for Civil and Human Rights. And I signed up as backup for the center for Joel for this. And I'm very happy to be here. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Mr. Paul Carter. Thanks, Trent. I'm uh, Paul Crater. And Crater. I'm, uh, it's okay. Good to um, meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> um, I am Vice President of Collections and Research Services at the Atlanta History Center. Um, and I Candy had reached out to uh, Sue Verhoff, who uh, she does some work. Sue is a colleague of mine and uh, does uh, work with uh, oral history, uh, veterans history project at the Atlanta History Center. And we're obviously an organization interested in the interpretation and presentation of subjects pertaining to Atlanta history. And so we're interested in lending our resources. Uh, collection resources and otherwise to uh, to this project. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Paul. Jill? Hi, I'm Jill Savitt. I'm the CEO at the National Center for Civil and Human Rights. Um, we have a project called Truth and Transformation and one of the strategies of it is to generate awareness about the tactic of racial terror and the post-reconstruction era in history. And one of the ways we wanna do that is tell the story of the 1906 race massacre, which people don't know a lot about and we feel provides a way to enter the larger history through this specific history. And we have some work arranged on that and have developed some relationships to, to do that in parallel to the work that the coalition was doing and so are now delighted to be braided together with the work of the coalition. Outstanding. Thank you, Jill. Uh, Mr. Hank. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it, Trent. My name is Hank Klibanoff. Uh, like Jill, I'm with the Truth and Transformation um, Operation, um, appendage of everything and uh, I am um, working primarily on research, researching 1906, researching the, uh, those who were the victims of the massacre, uh, 
where possible, those who are perpetrators. Um, I teach at Emory University in the creative writing program and nonfiction. I uh, teach a course called the Georgia Civil Rights Cold Cases Project, which examines unpunished racially motivated killings in Georgia history. Uh, it's, I've been doing this since 2011. And uh, most of mine are during the modern civil rights era. So post-World War II till around 1968, 1970. Um, I, as a spinoff from that, I do a podcast uh, with WABE called Buried Truths, which um, has veered away from that modern civil rights period twice, well, once, and that is to do a series last fall on Ahmaud Arbery. And um, then I have used my class on one occasion to teach 1906, even though it fell outside that time frame. And as part of that class, um, I worked with a, the newly created Arts and Social Justice Project at Emory and with my students working with a phenomenal uh, alumni, uh, alum of Emory, Garrett Turner, who's an actor who's been on Broadway in recent weeks, um, produced uh, 16 small videos of dialogues and monologues of people who were uh, engaged in the true life people who were engaged in the night circumstances around the 1906 Atlanta race massacre. Uh, these were dialogues and monologues that were performed by uh, well-known actors here in, in Atlanta from the West Coast and from New York. Um, what else? Um, I'm, um, I think that's pretty much it. I wrote a book about civil rights. So I've, I've had a long uh, a news coverage of the civil rights struggle. And I just grew up in Alabama as, as a white guy, seeing all that crap that was going on and decided to do more than just be on the sidelines. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Hey, We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Thee, Thee Smith, uh, you are still muted. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Let's see if I, I can't, I'm also trying to get video, visuals. There we go. You can see I, you can hear you. And you can hear me. Yes. yes. Great. So it's Thee, Thee Smith. So I, I chair the board for Southern Truth and Reconciliation, STAR, and uh, along with Trent and Andy in this group. I think that's the three of us from STAR here today. Yes. And um, privileged to have been at both the 2006 centennial that Andy mentioned, as well as this, this year's 115th anniversary. And STAR was instrumental in planning the coalition back then, um, is that 15 years ago? as well as uh, this time around. And so we're, we do truth, truth and reconciliation work. Our, our, our founding goal back in 2003 was to do truth, actual truth commissions. And we have, we're still, <laughs> still have that millennial goal to actually have a truth commission, regional, Southern or Georgia's or Atlanta, whatever. So we do truth commission type processes that include memorial events, commemorations, uh, as well as workshop tr uh, d diversity training workshops and so on. And then this, this work that we're doing here today, coordinating partner organizations to build coalitions around these issues. So we're delighted to do that. I'm delighted to have met uh, all of you in this last venture. Um, I think I want to, I want to thank, thank you all for your cooperation and expertise. And we are so much further along than we were in 2006 in, in building connections across partner organizations. And I'm honored and delighted that we are, we've consolidated that, that effort from back then so that now we're stronger in terms of coalition building, in terms of who we are here, uh, people, partners at the table, stakeholders, delighted. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Thee. Um, I, I just want to say that uh, one of the things that I love about this group is that um, everybody is humble and each of you understated who you are and what you do. <laughs> and uh, 
And uh, I, I'm, I just think that it's just a, a wonderful group of people. Um, and you can see how we can have a reasonable expectation to see this coalition and its work really, really take a hold and do some things that have been uh, sought after for quite some time. Um, Sardea uh, Mawakil, who is also a co-chair, was not able to join us. Um, uh, another person who, who was the co-chair of the Centennial uh, Recognition. And also um, uh, Dr. Uh, Clarissa Myrick Harris uh, was not able to join us uh, as a co-chair. And the list, and also uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Umoja Akinye, uh, Akinyele uh, Emoja, uh, just so you all uh, kind of understand what type of, of intellect and what type of, of, of resource uh, that we have here. Um, so uh, with that being said, uh, and with thanks, our agenda today, uh, which we plan to go through uh, very quickly and efficiently, uh, is to just review the mission of the coalition. Um, and that's just a quick read that uh, Candy's going to take us through. Uh, and to identify what, what is it that the coalition is going to attempt to do uh, for 2022? What is uh, you, were, you were going to give us a brief introduction to Albert as well. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. I, I, I keep I keep talking about Albert and I, I, I want to, uh, I, I missed the official moment to talk about Albert. You all will see Mr. Albert. Albert, can you say hi to us? Albert is responsible uh, for uh, making this this meeting happen uh, uh, technically and uh, maximizing the use of Zoom. Um, and that's just, Albert is a, a photographer. Well, I'm going to let him introduce himself. <laughs> You're doing fine. I'm a technician by nature. Electronics are where I spend a lot of my time. And this is just one of those tools that I use. So I was asked to come sit in and kind of work the buttons and be like the Wizard of Oz behind that curtain so that you make it happen what you need to happen. So I'm here, if you got any questions. All right. Albert, Albert, you were also active in one of our partner organizations around one of the coalition partners. I'm, with the, which... I'm with the NAACP DeKalb and also the Remembrance Project as well. The DeKalb Remembrance Project, which yes. is also per, 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 per completing one of the Equal Justice Initiative, EJI. Exactly. Uh, projects uh, out of, uh, in our local area. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, so add community activists to that list. All right. And Thank you. Trent, I'm not sure if you saw that Dr. Umoja uh, joined us. You had, mm -hmm. We had the wrong Zoom uh, forwarded to him and he has to leave at three. So we want to get to whatever he wants to share. Quickly. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Doctor, thank you, Candy. Dr. Moja, would you please introduce yourself? Everyone has given their name, title, uh, their organization, and uh, a brief word on your organizational or personal interest in, uh, in the 1906 coalition efforts. Wow, okay. Uh, I'm Akinyele Umoja. I'm a, a professor of Africana Studies at Georgia State University. Um, a former student of Thie Smith, uh, he was my, one of my professors in graduate school. I'm also a founder of the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement and New African People's Organization. So I'm a community activist as well as a scholar. Uh, my interest in this is uh, not only scholarly, but personal, you know, I, uh, concerned about, you know, the struggles of our ancestors, uh, telling our story, having their stories told. I participated in uh, uh, the, the centennial commemoration uh, by participating in the coalition, as well as I was uh, doing that, uh, I guess it was in the fall, I taught a course at Georgia State uh, on uh, Massacre, massacre 
uh, my students were involved in commemorative events as well as uh, uh, studying and learning about it. Uh, participated in a conference that we had that fall at Georgia State University where we had uh, Gottschalk and I'm trying to remember the other book that came out around that time. Um, both lectured as well as Alton Hornsby and other folk about uh, the racial massacre at that time. Uh, so just uh, someone who's interested in the story being told, the story being remembered for us to uh, commemorate the lives that were lost, as well as the resistance that occurred during that time. That, um, um, you know, um, What's my 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 friend uh, at Morehouse? Uh, I mean, I, 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 you got to excuse me. I'm in. The, I, I, I've been grading and reading applications for a search, so my mind is a little muddled. But uh, you know, so uh, the resistance during that time, which I think has not been talked about enough, uh, uh, that our people uh, engaged in during that time, and of course, uh, working at Georgia State where uh which was the, the area which was the epicenter of the massacre uh there's not enough uh recognition of what happened there uh, oftentimes tell my students that you know every day you walk in the epicenter of the massacre on that downtown campus but it's nothing to make you acknowledge that, uh, that a tragedy happened there the lives were lost there. So, uh, you know, that's something I think that has to be addressed. And that, you know, I think that concludes my remarks. Trent, you're on mute, I'm sorry. Trent, you're on mute. Okay, yeah. there we go. All right, thank you. Uh, Thank you, uh, and thank you for joining us. And we'll move forward quickly. We understand uh, you and uh, may have to leave, leave us early. And we're gonna try to get out of here early too. Um, I was just going through the agenda and um, uh, at number three, we just want to frame uh, what the strategic plan for the coalition is. Again, very, very generically, but still looking ahead. All right. And actually, it's a one to five year plan. Uh, talk about the funding and support. Uh, and we will do that with a breakout session um, according to type of organizations. Right now, we are very, very uh, academic heavy. And that is outstanding. Uh, so we have the scholarship working uh, very heavily uh, in this project. And so one breakout room will be uh, academia and the other breakout room will be other nonprofits. Um, hopefully when we do this again in March uh, of, of next year, we'll have a breakout for business and a breakout for government and, uh, and et cetera. Uh, but uh, we'll answer the questions that we talked about earlier. Uh, and then we'll talk about next steps. With that being said, I'm going to hand it over to Candy uh, to go through um, our mission in the next slides. Candy. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> my own, am I on mute? And trying to on our screen, we have it forwarded to the to that slide. Um, can you all see mission? No, not yet. Hmm. Okay. Let me. Uh, uh, what do do you all see? Any slides? We see the very first one. The very first one. Okay. Let me un. Okay, must be frozen somehow. Um, okay. Can you see that? No change. No change. Uh, you might want you might want to stop screen share and start again. Yes. 
And Candy, I don't know if you're in a position to. Um, I have it, so I can go ahead and read it. Um, but it's always good for folks to see the mission as well. But I'll try but to while, share it again. Go ahead. While, while he's doing that, uh, we, the collective mission that was decided on by a group um, when we began this earlier this year is that the mission, the 1906 coalition through the arts, memorializations, other remembrance events, and scholarly programs will present the historical truths about the devastating and long-term traumatic effects of racial terrorism against African-Americans in Atlanta, typified by the 1906 race massacre. Our vision, so in so doing, uh, our vision is to foster racial reconciliation and cultural restoration in order to heal and bring about a transformational Atlanta where equal opportunity and social justice prevail and where the ravages of racial hatred and disparities are relics of the past. So a mouthful, but we were um, very hopeful you in are our efforts. Now? We still have the same slide. Okay. All right, go ahead, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, and given that as a as a mission, I'm hopeful you know that we are still feeling we're on that same path and trajectory. And um, if anyone else has any points or any questions, feel free to chime in now. But we'll move on uh, to our program objectives uh, for the 116th anniversary. And in doing so, we're hopeful to expand the interfaith participation that we um, put as a target uh, to install markers, expand the coalition, as Trent said earlier, to include coalition, um, to include government, businesses, and other entities. And then we're also seeking to carry out some of the objectives at the 100th anniversary coalition had established in 2006. And since we have some of that historical memory with us, um, anything that we have not set out, uh, please um, chime in and put us on a, on a correct our path, as they say. Um, but we're hopeful in this breakout to, you know, to discuss some of that. Do any of our um, initial leaders of the coalition have any comments about what you'd see that you'd like to have happen in the in the future? Uh, this is and Andy, you were about to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I in the beginning I always saw it as a great opportunity for neighborhoods to cross-pollinate, uh, a, a uh, great opportunity. Can, I'm not hearing any audio. Is anyone hearing me? Yes, we hear you, yes. Steve, and I heard you. hear Andy, hear, yeah. hear you both. But the screen hasn't changed. Yes. Okay. Andy, were you about to say something that I missed? Go ahead. I just wanted to put my two cents in for uh, ways that we could um, have various neighborhoods in the city cross-pollinate. Uh, for example, one of the ideas was to take uh, a group from uh, a congregation in the church on the south side that would then bus to, you know, Morningside Baptist, and the same would happen at Morningside Baptist. They'd go to the other side and participate in um, remembrances in various churches and synagogues uh, all over the city. Just wanted to mention that as a possibility. So groups from the South Side come to- Yes, and uh, I wanted to add the, that part of my interest is for this time around in 2022, uh, would be, as Trent has suggested, so strategically planned that it would not be, um, you know, kind of a, we would not be in a kind of urgency mode 
but also that the coordinators would be well compensated for their efforts. So I'd like to have a, you know, have to like to have our budgeting process mm-hmm. more um, uh, transparent as well as uh, anticipated in terms of uh, the amount of who's, who's, who's doing what and how they're being uh, deployed in terms of either belonging to a staff, staff assignments or other kinds of um, remuneration for time so that it's not on a, a kind of a, a, we're not on a kind of make or break anyone's uh, physical energies and lifestyles in order to, to do this work. It could be normalized uh, as, as part of one's normal work activities and not a kind of a um, crisis mode, urgent, urgent, uh, urgent task. So that there would be more hands at the, at the till and more, more, um, more of a sense of uh, coordination. So Great. I'm looking forward to that in this effort. Thank you. Wonderful. Trent, we do see the uh, slides um, that you're sharing now. Um, can you go up one? We're, we're on the next. Okay. Or down one. <laughs> okay. My apologies. Okay. Uh, Trent, if you, if you click slide, slideshow, we'll get a better view. Yes. And um, I was hoping that that wasn't the issue. Uh, okay. You all see that, uh, the mission Great. vision now? Yes. yes. Okay. And program objectives? Again, we've talked about you know, expanding the interfaith. And then Andy added, again, this um, neighborhood cross-pollination, which was not something I'd heard before. So that's a, um, a nice addition. The marker installation, expanding the coalition to government businesses and other entities. And then we've heard from Fee about um, making sure that we have funding in place uh, so that everything's not managed on a volunteer basis. Can we go on to the next slide. And then of course, as a group, as we look to plan this coming year, 2022, what do we do strategically beyond 2022 might be to seek a statewide approval of curriculum, to look at the a state level name change, what we've talked about from riot to massacre, uh, we do a lot of work, or we did a lot of work with Southview Cemetery, and how might we adopt that as a, you know, as a historical site of memory uh, in the South Atlanta Brownsville neighborhood. Uh, work towards rebuilding historic presence and prosperity on these main streets. So, looking at Auburn Avenue and the Jonesboro Road area. Work towards a national involvement and recognition similar to what we see uh, so pr- prevalent with uh, Tulsa you know, and still we're having trouble getting recognition here in Atlanta. And then finally to you know, possibly seek reparations and how we, how we go about doing that as a coalition. Group. That's what we want to do. Does anyone else, anything else come to mind or as you're reviewing this list have any comment, Jill? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what does national recognition look like? like what, what is that, how would that manifest? Well, we'd, we'd like to align ourselves with other cities that have had these traumas and, mm-hmm. you know, and elevated past just Atlanta and Georgia. So that's what, what I was thinking. Thanks. Along the lines of Tulsa and Oconee and South Carolina, et cetera, et cetera, definitely. So it means raising the profile so people in the country know that it also happened in Atlanta. Yeah, um, That's- Rosewood in the chat. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Next slide, please. Okay. All right. Well, Trent, I think this is you. My turn. <laughs> okay. All right. So, in 
how, how, how do we accomplish this? How do we accomplish the objectives that we set out for next year and for those that we are looking at uh, beyond next year? Um, initially, what we are recommending is that the same uh, lead core organizations just continue the work into next year. Uh, that's CCI, STAR, and uh, NCCHR, uh, possibly FCRC. Uh, they were a core leader this year, uh, and we just uh, have not confirmed with them yet that that's a role that they want to continue to play. And uh, so we'll see. Um, uh, and uh, so we want to just continue the work that we're doing as the lead and fiduciary organizations um, towards next year with the coalition members uh, providing what I like to call the three T's, time, talent, and treasure. Uh, and with various organizations perhaps taking on a part of uh, the programming uh, each year uh, on a, a rotational basis. Um, um, we may have an organization that wants to focus, for instance, on um, on uh, the marker placement or an organization that may want to focus this year on uh, the goal to uh, do a statewide um, curriculum, uh, et cetera. Uh, that's a model for moving forward into this year. Uh, Candy will discuss the, the budget here in a moment. Um, and that's what it is geared towards, is these acting as a center organization to to uh, provide the, of the direction uh, and the personnel to carry the mission forward. Um, going beyond that, uh, we looked at two possible options for the coalition. One could be for the coalition to be housed, if you will, within one of the member institutions. Uh, so that would look like, uh, for instance, the coalition being housed in a department of one of the universities, for instance, or one of the nonprofits. Uh, and it would be a work of that organization, um, still working as a coalition, but housed and resourced by that organization. Um, uh, uh, another model, uh, and this would be a long-term or at least a part of the two to five year plan. Uh, and uh, there are several discussions that would need to happen because this is, uh, uh, it's a big step. And that would be for the coalition to be formed as its own 501c3 uh, nonprofit entity. Into Europe and it still represents the concern. Yes. Oh, okay. Someone, someone needs to mute. All right. Um, and uh, so as its own entity, you know, of course, there are pros and cons to that. Uh, on, on, the, the, on the con side, of course, anytime you form a, a nonprofit, uh, you've got the challenges in doing that. Uh, cost and organization and uh, leadership, et cetera, et cetera. On the pro side of that is that the coalition would uh, be free to operate as its leadership and as its constituency uh, direct and uh, uh, desires. Um, because each organization, each institution has its own policies, um, its own uh, processes, its own politics, its own image. And uh, sometimes a coalition like this can get uh, caught up in that uh, in some very good or negative ways. Uh, and so a standalone coalition eventually might be, um, might be uh, an objective as we move into next year and plan uh, for the future. So just to put those out there to consider, to think about both for next year immediately um, and uh, for what the coalition how the coalition might evolve in the years beyond that. Okay, any thoughts, any feedback uh, on this strategic framing? And this is, <coughs> this is the long and short of what we want to accomplish today in terms of talking about uh, what the vision looks like. Any, any thoughts, any feedback?
Okay. All right. Pretty cut and dry. Okay. And. Okay. All right, funding and support. So how do we bring this to pass? We've talked about our objectives for the immediate future of 2022. Uh, we've talked about um, how we made it through uh, and accomplished something this year. Uh, we've talked about a longer term uh, vision for the coalition. We've kind of assessed who's at the table and what the various interests are, what our legacy is as far as what has happened before. So how do we make this happen from a, a programmatic uh, standpoint? And at this point, uh, Candy is going to just highlight uh, the budget for 2021 and the budget, uh, the projected budget uh, for next year and the support needs. All right, Candy. Yes, and Albert, do I have permission to share my screen? Yes, you do. You're a co-host. You got the power. And if my slides mess up again for some reason, uh, Candy, please jump in. Okay. Um, you, I think you need to unshare. You're okay. Not letting me share. All right. Let me do that. Okay. says host disabled participant sharing. <laughs> Let me make sure. The tech okay. gurus don't want to work with us today. Okay, tech let's go. You should have the you should have it now. Yes. Okay. Try that I do. I, I, I got it. Yeah. Okay. And again, just to give you all a um, high level, but we do have the detail here is again, uh, we were given um, 12,000 from the National Center for Civil and Human Rights, 10,000 from Emory. And then uh, we, the, thing, the items in red were those items that we uh, did not get enough funding for. So we were, we were actually short this year about $9,000 and most of those are speaker fees. There is a, um, an outstanding, you know, fee for the rental of the space. Um, and then we had some staff that we'd like to, you know, to pay, um, excuse me for going, moving that too, too fast. So the total um, project was $31,065 thereabouts. What I've done is also um, given a projection based on the models that we've discussed for this coming year for 2022 would be to hopefully have, you know, paid uh, director to help us with the planning and finding funding up to the event in September and then doing any reporting we have to do for those funds at the end of the year, uh, having an administrative assistant. And then in our model of what we did this past year of having speakers, a facility, and then 20,000 for programming and looking at the um, this year's shortfall, we're looking at a budget of, of $65,000 that we um, need some ideas from the advisors on how we go about getting that to do the work that we want to have done. It doesn't happen for free. Uh, Candy, could you go up a little bit again uh, to the budget for this year? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just so everyone kind of gets a sense, uh, looking from left to right, all of the work that was done. Um, uh, and who we were able to, to compensate for what they did and the amounts. And, and that's how it should look. That's how it should look. Um, from yeah, the audience, so to the speakers, uh, to the uh, admin folks, um, recording, 
So you get a chance to see, you get a chance to see very clearly uh, what, what was actually done. And this was in a very, very short period of time. So our expectation is that with us ramping up this early, that, you know, with not as much sweat, uh, we, can, we can do this again and even do it at a, at a higher level. And you will see that uh, uh, the, the time that Candy and I put in this was, was it felt like full time. Would you say, Candy? <laughs> <laughs> time and a half. <laughs> That's right. But we did not take any compensation uh, out of the budget for it. But we would like to see whoever does this for next year um, that, you know, they're, they're duly compensated for, for, the, for the use of their gifts and talents. I have a question. Uh, on that budget, are any of those bills that are outstanding? I see that some of them, it, that I guess people have waived the fee that it would be great to pay them, but are any of them outstanding bills? Uh, yes, there are. So we still have a um, to pay the Rice, the Russell Center. Um, this is a primary bill, and then others are, are speaker fees. Okay. Why don't I can volunteer the center to take care of the bill? Mm -hmm. So you don't have an outstanding bill. Okay. And then we can look at some of the other stuff. But what what was the bill? I, I, you know, none it's, of these. Huh? It's fifteen hundred. Yeah, let's just not have an outstanding bill. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jill. I, yeah, of course. I, I totally. That for those of you who pray, that's an answer to prayer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for those of you who pray, yeah, that's that's wonderful. Going into the new year with uh, with a clean slate and uh, uh, zero balance, that's that's top notch. Thank you, Jill. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Larissa's with us. What, oh. you, Andy? Larissa is with us. Oh, Harris is here. wonderful. Yeah. Hello. How is everyone? I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm just getting in, but this is that time of year. <laughs> back Absolutely. Back. Absolutely. Uh, like I Good said earlier, we, we are very academic heavy in this coalition. So, we were, that's one reason why we said it uh, after grading period, but we know still, whatever you do at this time of year, it's tough. So we appreciate you being here. And, and yes. Larissa, would you tell us just a little bit about uh, who you are, just your name, your position, your institution, oh, sure. and your okay. interest mm -hmm. in this? Yes. Okay. Clarissa Myrick Harris. I'm chair of the humanities division at Morehouse and professor of Africana studies. Uh, I was a part of the um, the coalition um, that um, existed, uh, but now 15 years ago or more, um, and um, when was co-chair of uh, the education um, initiative in particular uh, with uh, Cliff Kuhn, who did, and also with um, Andy Ambrose. I was co-curator of uh, the exhibit that was done at the King's site. Um, and then I just participated in the, the, the commemoration that we did just uh, in, the, in September, gosh, a couple of months ago. Uh, so just so very happy that um, this has been revived at Candy and Trent and Andy and others uh, are, are really moving forward with this. And I'm looking forward to being uh, involved throughout moving forward. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Clarissa. And you now we're we're only we only one short of all of our honorary co-chairs. Thank you all for for putting in the time at this 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 point in, of the year. Um, and at, at this point, uh, we've come we, we've talked about the budget and we just had a real win. Uh, to top it all off with uh, Jill and the NCCHR, um, you know, volunteering, stepping forward to, to, to clean the slate, the, the budgetary slate. And so at this point, we can really, really look forward to what do we, how do we make this happen for next year? 
And so with that being said, um, we had breakouts and uh, with this group, it's almost not necessary to break out, but we thought it would be to take 15 minutes and talk institutionally, um, we thought would still be, uh, uh, would still be beneficial. Um, so to that extent, uh, we have another technical step to make here. Uh, I'll be with the nonprofit breakout uh, um, uh, uh, and uh, Candy will be with Dr. Fee in the academia breakout. And uh, we'll answer these questions and have someone from the group come back in and just give what the responses were uh, for these. And this is just an opportunity to talk within uh, colleges and universities, do things in one way, nonprofits, other nonprofits tend to do things. So you all can talk your language and talk your policy on how you might be able to, uh, to help empower this coalition forward. And Hank, what was the name of the last thing that you asked about? Arch or ARC or you're on mute? It's A-R-C-H-E, the Atlanta Regional Consortium for Higher Education. Right, and that they changed that consortium to council. So it's now Atlanta Regional Council for Higher Education. Oh, oh. Was it yeah. once consortium or? Yeah, it was. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just know, among other things, that, you know, our students can go to any school that's part of that. It's a pretty large group and get credit in their classes. They're mm -hmm. transferable, but although I think at Emory, you can only do it past fail, you know. So are we back in the main group? We are. We are. We didn't, we didn't watch the clock, y'all. We did. <laughs> we, we were in mid-sentence and got got the Scotty beam me up. We <laughs> got to another planet somehow. Okay. Um, we were just uh, finishing a piece. Um, uh, Paul was giving us feedback on uh, a couple of questions that he had toward getting a better sense of what the Atlanta, what role the Atlantic History Center could play. And uh, I was explaining that um, that the the this work was done once before in 2006. Um, and there have been other separate things to happen. And I think again, one of those things was at the Atlantic History Center, uh, uh, an exhibit. But as far as a coalition, this year was the first time since then that the work has been done. So in short, uh, Paul, there's not been uh, any um, this year, uh, not any um, uh, uh, fundraising uh, efforts beyond asking coalition members to contribute. So we've not had, we started this about two months before the actual event. So we didn't have the window to seek grants, seek funding, which is why we want to have someone, you know, someone or some people at this on a, on a part or full time basis, so that we can we we can seek that. And Andy, you and uh, Clarissa can perhaps talk more about what type of funding or granting. Um, uh, was sought after or achieved for the coalition in 2006. Uh, Paul was interested in, in what type of, of funding was sought after uh, previously. Well, I'm trying to remember. I think we may have gotten, and um, so Dara was a big part of that. I wasn't really involved in the actual um, grant making for that, but I think funds came in addition from the Park Service, um, maybe the Georgia um, Council, Georgia Humanities Council. Um, is Andy, Andy Sheldon in the room? Yeah, Andy, you're on mute. 
And the, I, I, I don't recall because I wasn't involved in the fundraising at that point. Nor was I, Clarissa. So we'll have to <laughs> check out Sadea. But, but Sadea, Sadea was. Uh, yeah, so okay. she would know offhand because I do remember we got a, a grant for the exhibit to do the exhibit. Um, and whether that came from the Park Service or the Georgia Humanities Council, I, I just don't remember. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, Paul, is it your thinking that upon further consideration and, and, and maybe deliberation, yeah, you just one wanted role to, that you the, didn't want to walk away and say, okay, we're done, until somebody else kind of said that too, you know, just to be safe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that um, one possible role that the Atlanta History Center could play is um seeking or identifying uh funds grants perhaps um in addition to some other things sorry my wife's in the room with me so oh, oh, <laughs> i have oh, competing oh. voices yeah, tell, you, tell your wife she has a, a, a broadcaster's voice i thought it was the cnn or something <laughs> <laughs> It was just, she was just shamed to leave the room. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that's, that's a role that uh, we could play is to, to try to, I mean, I think Georgia Humanities Council was kind of the first organization I thought of when um, the issue of fundraising was, was brought up earlier in the meeting. Um, and I would be interested in, in, kind of doing some legwork to determine if there might be other sources of fundraising grants uh, <laughs> available. Um, you know, just off, the, just off the top of my head, I mean, I think that's probably the, the first uh, or the main, one of the main ways that the History Center, uh, Center could be involved and just, um, you know, I, I think we could, we could potentially be involved in other ways, but grant, you know, grant making, I think would, sort of tops the list for me right now outstanding outstanding and and i would imagine that uh, with enough ramp up this year or maybe next year um you and i don't know the the center could maybe work together on exhibits or uh some other type of uh display event uh or events during the program time yeah. Yeah, I think as, as I've shared with all of you before, we're expanding the center. And so we're going to have an exhibit that we're starting to work on now uh, of the Without Sanctuary collection. And so that covers a lot of similar ground to this and that our work on 1906 is, is somewhat, it's, it's related to that, but also a little bit separate. So um, you know, as, as far as that project goes, that will be the exhibit that will, that we're committed to on, on this. I, I don't know that we would do an additional one. Right, right. And Jill, what's the timing on that? So is it, that's not going to happen by this, you know, by September. Yeah, we're looking yeah. at what year? Uh, that'll open in the summer of 2024. Okay. Gotcha. And there's a whole bunch of stuff related to that that could benefit this group because we're going to digitize a lot of what's there. It's not 1906 pho photography or postcards. It's not related to 1906, but it can help set a context for the broader issue of lynching as a strategy to stop Black progress, if, you know, as that being part of the storyline of 1906. Right. Real quickly, uh, Trent and Candy and Paul, the History Center mounted an incredibly powerful performance sometime last year, I believe, having to do with uh, civil rights and, and, and racial violence. And I can't off the top of my head remember the name of it, but it was, it would be terrific to do something like that again, if possible. Yes. I, I recall that. I think Quasi attended that. Um, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. And I, I know anything like that 
again, um, Paul, just keep in mind that we're focused on next year, but we're looking three to five years, you know, in advance. So I know some, it takes time uh, to do, you know, think about exhibits and performances and things like that. But uh, we'll put that in there. And you, was and there Trent, that, was, that certainly was brought up in our group um, right. in looking at a three to five year approach to foundations uh, right. and looking at a social justice um, you know, concept paper around mm -hmm. what we're doing to get, you know, so we don't have to go each year, you know, um, begging, but we can you know, have a more substantial ask over, over an extended period, because this is work that we continue to want to do and to roll out. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, was there anything else that uh, came out of the academia breakout? Again, just to um, harp in on the social justice message, mm -hmm. um, we, we, we saw that you know, Emory might have uh, a pot or pots in a few places, but other academic institutions uh, didn't have that, um, that barrel of, of money or the tree of, of funds uh, to pull from. Uh, but so we'll, we'll go after that a little bit more deep, deeply. Uh, and then we uh, put a list of other, you know, corporate and foundation entities that we might want to, you know, that we might, as a group, put a list together to to work on and explore to to do this fundraising collectively. If I might add, that's that's not something we know though. We don't know that other institutions won't have yeah, we, some resources, or that they couldn't be persuaded to direct some of their resources there um we we were talking specifically about uh, our institution morehouse and georgia state that were represented <laughs> in the breakout room and you know we have funding uh, i've been able to get some grants recently for specific um initiatives uh and initiatives related to social justice right but in terms of additional funds um within those pots uh th that's more difficult so uh, i think um coming up with this concept paper that we can shop around to several foundations, foundations that we already have relationships with in addition to others uh, and make that connection. You know, this is, uh, we're talking about really providing historical context to understanding what's happening around social injustice today. And so I, I think there would be great interest, uh, great interest in that. And, and so, yeah, as Candy said, coming up with a concept paper and uh, a plan, a three to five year um, plan to get funding to support the initiative over that time, uh, I think is, is doable. Uh, and I think we, and during this time, I think we would have um, foundations and corporate corporations that would be interested in supporting. I wonder also if there's any soft or in-kind, you know, we contribution we could get from institutions of higher learning and others, even if it's someone who can work part-time. I mean, if suddenly we all decide, okay, we really want to go after certain money, certain funding, whether it's from Kellogg or any of the national groups that have shown a you know, propensity, I don't know how many of us have time to sit down and write all the letters. <laughs> um, and I just wonder if we, I wonder if we've thought about whether or not the advancement people at Emory or at Spelman or Morehouse or, or you know, in any of these Georgia State would be able to donate us X number of hours a week, you know, or the, the that part of someone's time, or is that rational or? You know, I think I think what would be from our perspective in terms of more, so our advancement folk are really overburdened as well. What yeah. would make sense, I think, is um, is is hiring a grant writer. You know, mm -hmm. uh, having some dollars uh, designated. You know, whether it's five thousand or ten thousand uh, or, or more, whatever, for someone to come up with to work with us to come up with a viable proposal, uh, and we got a lot of grant writers um, in Metro Atlanta. Uh, some might be affiliated with uh, some of our institutions and also work um, in, a, uh, in a consultative capacity on their own. But um, and Candy, I'm sure you probably know some folk. Um, uh, and I, if I think about it, I can probably identify. Uh, one or two people who are really good grant writers. That's a good uh, idea. So, so we'll go after. So we'll go after them for 
uh, someone to work half time for us, and they say we couldn't possibly we're stretched, and we say, okay, well then how about a check that allows us to hire someone instead? You know, it's just all part of the negotiation, maybe. Right. 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 <laughs> okay, um, Jill, from our breakout and what we talked about and what has been discussed so far, what, what would you add to that? To this? Yeah. Um, so two things I raised in the breakout was, so as part of this truth and transformation, we have, um, we raised money to do a curriculum. So, and the extent to which we want to have the coalition um, look at the outline and and talk about, you know, and, and go over some of the ideas and all of that. I mean, we have a education department and education director and we try these things out on APS students. And, you know, so we could do that part of it. Um, and then it led me to the question of Frank and uh, of Trent, and I'll put it to the whole group, which is, you know, I've worked in coalitions before where a project could get slowed down enormously because people in the coalition disagree about something. You know, like in the case of a curriculum, you could have coalition members say, I don't like this framing, I'd rather it be this framing. And so the extent to which we need to define the parameters of the coalition as consultative, as or is it a consensus co coalition? Do we all have to agree on everything before the coalition moves forward or is it more an advisory group if one project is taking, if one group is taking the lead on something. Um, I've been in coalitions before that develop value statements that everybody agrees to, um, guardrails, candy like we did in Montana for the Bellwood mm -hmm. group of groups, you know, like that's more of a consensus coalition. It's at, it seemed like it was going in that direction where people are gonna agree. Is this the same? Thing? Do we need sort of guardrails of um, how are decisions made, that kind of thing. So that might be a good idea. Um, and then that would give the center guidance on in developing curricular materials, um, how we consult with the coalition, if that makes sense to people. Yes, yes. Okay. And, uh, so yeah, what happened? But in order for some organizations to put their names on things, they need to go through big processes, you know, the extent to which we want to have that be part of it. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Jill, I had a question about, um, so because you, your organization gave funding last year, was that an individual? Was it a foundation? Not, not that you have to reveal who it is. I'm just saying, so as we look, to, so we don't run over your toes. Yeah, you that was the past before. Mm -hmm. The Blank Foundation gave funds to the okay. center, and we have we're going to hire somebody. We have a job description out there. If you all know anybody, um, and so those resources, and then we raise resources to do curricular materials. We raise resources to start the Bellwood work. There was a bunch of things in there, including some micro grants that we had to spend last year, and we had earmarked. The micro grant, as you know, can't be for Fulton County oh, right. uh, Remembrance, and they said they didn't want it. So we had that. We, we knew by the end of the, our fiscal year, which is calendar, that we had that money. We have micro grants again for next year, um, and so some of this work, like I've already just said, I'm in my mind when I knew you had a bill. Mm -hmm. I know there's fifteen hundred dollars that we can use to pay that yeah. off as gotcha. part of that micro grant. Mm -hmm. So the money was given and it was, we raised it for certain things. And so some of it is like the curriculum mm -hmm. that for those funds are spoken for. But there is in that um, some of these micro grants and, you know, we could have a deeper discussion about how that micro, some of those grants could go towards the 116th for sure. But, you know, the Blank Foundation is, the name is brought up often within yeah. Atlanta. So we don't want to go to them and know that they've already yeah, given they would be, for the same they would, work. So mm -hmm. they probably think they've given on this front. And it would be right. hard for me to go back to them and say, I need more money for 1906 because I 
just told them how I was going to spend that money, you know. Right, right. And this was before we all got intertwined on this, so. Okay. Sounds like you. Sounds Thank like you. you'd much rather have them when they see what a an incredible event this is going to be, come along and say, hey, you forgot us. <laughs> Here's some more. <laughs> yeah, I mean, That's right. That's but right. it does seem like I got in before the wire with them because now they've got three buckets and they're very strict about those. And um, yeah, and I, truth and transformation doesn't fit neatly. I, I mean, uh, truth of the past or remembrance of history and that kind of stuff doesn't fit neatly in to those buckets. So. Okay, okay. You want to wrap this up? Yep, yep, most definitely. So here is what I uh, here is what I'm taking away from uh, from uh, uh, from all of this. Okay, uh, and this is this is this is the 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 cha -ching. Okay, uh, first of all, we'll we'll identify it, it, one of the recommendations for next steps is that. This group has an advisory group uh, we, out of respect for all that you all are doing. We're projecting meeting no more than four times next year. Um, and it's on the next slide. I think it's March, June, September, December, something along those lines. But we wanna have some work taking place uh, in between that time. So what does that work consist of What's the focus of it and who does it? And so uh, what I'm hearing, uh, and I'm just going to make this visual, I'm hearing concept paper. Uh, and Are you sharing a slide? Because we're, yes. Not, yes, we're you're not, not seeing it again. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to take one we're more. On the first, we're on the first slide again. On the first slide again. I'm going to take only a second to do this. And if you all do not see it in a second, I'm just going to talk it through and y'all can uh, just take notes and we'll, we'll send it the notes. Do you see it in now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, concept paper, again, to the three to five year plan. Um, um, governing policies and procedures. And writer. Yep. And you know what I'm going to do with that. Uh, I'm going to put that at the top. <laughs> uh, because I think where, I'm, where my mind is going with this is if we, we, we look at the five, the three to five year plan, particularly for um, major funding and those fund the funding that takes process that but with the other concept that um, that Hank mentioned uh, soft and in kind um, contributions that that is something that we can look at happening before March, perhaps, so that as a goal by March, we might be able to have a grant writer on board and or someone to, to supervise this process in this direction. Um, so I hear that uh, grant writer, soft and kind, uh, and, and, and definitely as a role, um, for the grant writer would be this last piece that came up. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you for being problematic here, slides. Okay, is grant coordination. So that we have someone who is no, you know, who, who are we asking money for? And who is funding who, so that the you know this this person um, 
can make sure that, okay, we know that NCCHR and we know that um, uh, the Atlanta History Center and uh, Morehouse are, are being granted funds by such and such. So we don't want to, you know, dip in that pot uh, to focus our efforts. Does that make sense? It does. Mm -hmm. To address yes. the last piece. Yes. Um, and did I miss <laughs> anything? Uh, also, Jill, to your extent, uh, you talked about, again, the governing policies and procedures and related to that is, um, you know, specific uh, uh, um, strategies. What, what, what was the phrase that we came up with that the, the, the funding follows the... Oh, uh, the form? No, yeah. the formulation? Yeah. Something like that. Something. Formulation? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. I think that was it. It was good at the moment, right? Yeah, yeah, it was perfect. <laughs> right. We're uh, just old and can't remember. That's right, that's right. So, so the point there was that if we have... Uh, 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 a strategy for how to coordinate things, like, for instance, uh, um, uh, uh, parallel projects or overlapping projects. If we have a strategy, then the funding can follow that strategy and decrease the opportunities for conflicts or uh, uh, things of that nature. Um, uh, okay, for operations and funding, I just put it that way. Okay, uh, did I miss anything? So uh, let's we'll keep talking uh, on this uh, as time goes on. Um, uh, and I forgot, we did not answer, um, we, I don't think that we answered Paul's question on the historical markers. Uh, we have two entities that are working specifically on markers. One is FCRC, and it's working on specific markers in relationship with the Equal Justice Initiative. Uh, and those are markers specifically identifying uh, lynchings and their geographical locations. But we also have Dr. Paul Black at uh, Georgia State who is working specifically on state markers. Um, and I think the deadline for getting that in is March uh, if we want to see a marker put in the ground next September. So, Paul, that's the that's an answer to your question. I made a note to get back to you on that. Okay. So, with that being said, and with our last slide, as we reach 350, um, if we could, we, we'll send this out to everyone. And if we, at least with this in mind, uh, make a, a, a concerted uh, commitment um, to dialoguing with us on what arises in these areas. That sounds loose, that feels loose. If anybody has a recommendation on how we can uh, streamline or solidify that without it, we're again, very, very considerate of the work and the level of work and the, the weight of the work that each of you all are doing. So we're not trying to create, you know, uh, a, a, another job. Um, but what can we do between now and March to address the issues that that we just raised. And the short term, the, the like we like to say, the 10 meter target, the target that's just 10 meters away is 
getting someone on board who can push this forward. That means new funds, we can surf, we can send the budget or budget highlights as well. So we might be talking 10, 15, $20,000 or in-kind contributions, um, in-kind contributions uh, of personnel um, to towards the grant writer and towards the administrator to move this forward. So think about that. Uh, Candy, you might have some, some better sense of how we can solidify that between now and March. Um, and the last piece that we had on here, here's the schedule. We uh, would like to meet again in March, June, September, and November. Who might you have from your organization that can work with us representing you in the meantime? So that might be, that might be a part of the bridge someone who can kind of be in the trenches a little bit. And as we identify leadership going forward, uh, working you know, on a daily or weekly basis after the beginning of the year to kind of hash some of this out. Does, does that make sense, everyone? I think we'll send a teaser to, you know, to ask you who that, that yeah, is. Have to think about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, think about that. Okay, great. Um, and again, considering, uh, I think we, we, we've made a lot of uh, 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 progress here. Uh, just in a word, you all, uh, each of you tell me what, what you feel about this meeting today, this, this collaboration. I like to call it a collaboration today. Um, a word, a sentence. Um, and I'm just going to go from left to right here. Hank, tell us. We covered a lot of ground. In my, in my, hold on. Yeah, okay. We covered a lot of ground. Uh, it's hard to go into any single thing as deeply as any of us, as actionably as any of us might want. And I understand that. But this is a good start, I think, you know, and that for many of you, it's not a start. You've been working at this for a long time. So I don't mean that in any uh, derogatory way, but I think, but, you know, it's, a, it is, it's a new beginning in many ways. So. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Hank. Uh, Andy, your thoughts, any final ideas, concepts? Absolutely. Uh, one thought is that I believe from my experience with the artwork and Hank was involved in that and can say so whatever he thinks about it is that I believe we're in the middle of a somewhat of a national trauma involving race. And just as with the lynching exhibit uh, so many years ago, I think mental health is a huge part of what's going on. It needs to be attended to. So I hope that we are able to focus on that somewhat, somehow. Secondly, I hope that, and I think I'm speaking to the choir here, that arts is a huge, huge piece of this. Um, that's all. Thank you for letting me participate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Andy. Paul. Well, I just, I just think this is a very important topic for Atlanta, uh, which was uh, in, which is why we wanted to be a part of this. And so um, uh, I am, am, am very uh, interested in, uh, in, in taking a role in this and seeing how the History Center uh, can, can forward this effort. Okay, excellent, excellent. Jill? Yeah, I think there's um, growing momentum on all of this. I can feel it. I'm so glad that this group has come together. Seems very well timed with the work that we've been planning. And so I think it's more, we have more solidarity in numbers and we're stronger in numbers. And I'm eager for us to all combine our talents and goodwill to move this forward. And 
y'all are just good company. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Thank you, Jill. Thank you. Uh, Clarissa. Uh, yes, well, I'm uh, like my colleagues, our colleagues, I'm, I'm hopeful um, in terms of what this can um, become and what we can create. Um, and I, I think um, also what's important um, to us, uh, to me, to us, is that we do involve um, the community. I, I applaud the efforts to get the community involved this year and the um, having as the venue, the Russell Center. Um, uh, and I think um, that's uh, that can be leveraged to get buy-in from the black business community to um, provide some support. Um, so I, I think we should go after that as well as um, going back to the communities themselves and the residents there. I think something that we had intended to do last time around 15 years ago was to have um, greater involvement. And we, uh, I think, did a good job of connecting to uh, descendants of those who witnessed the 1906 Atlanta um, race massacre. But um, I, I think reaching out to some of the uh, NPUs, and I remember, I remember an effort to do that. I can't remember what transpired in, in terms of reaching out to NPUs. Um, and because they are, um, there are NPUs that, and I think in that area, uh, around Clark Atlanta, um, well, what was Clark um, University, but um, but it's now the um, I can't remember the name of it. The, the high school. Atlanta. Thank it's you, Carver. Then Carver. Carver. Yes, yeah. Carver. Um, so reaching out to the residents um, of the of that community, the the businesses and uh, on Sweet Auburn, um, and residents as well, um, the community groups. I think that's important for for us to to do to get um, their voices, their ideas um, about what they'd like to see happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Clarissa. And Dee? Well, I think I've I'm just realizing how much it would have been, it's going to be helpful to have a public school, public schools educator in our, in our midst here, navigating yes. public school curricula. I'm just real. I'm just think. You know, as I've heard of our kind of our constellation of connections, that's the one that's that's missing. We've mentioned faith faith based communities, but let's get public schools in here too. And I'm encouraged that we've got enough heft to start figuring out where the gaps are and um, and what to, and, and 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 enough will and momentum to do something about those gaps. So, yep, let's make it happen. I have to run. I'm so sorry. I had a four that I got to go jump on. Okay. Thank you, Jill. All right. Thank you. And we're closing out. Uh, my apologies for any technical challenges that, that we may have had today. It would have been worse if we didn't have Albert with us. So Albert, thank you again uh, for making this happen. And I just want to say that I'm just honored and, and blessed to be uh, in the same room with uh, people who are making such a difference uh, in our community and in the world. I thank you for allowing me to do that. And uh, with that being said, uh, Candy, yes, uh, I'll, you have the final words. I'll close us out with just a reminder to take a moment and fill out the evaluation so we can um, get your personal thoughts. And my word for uh, with this encounter is uh, energized, re-energized. So certainly having you all here um, helps us, you know, the, the heavy lift of doing the work on a day-to-day -day basis makes it a lot more um, fulfilling to, you know, to see that we have some others that are gonna help us out and make, make this happen and continue our efforts to bring about the recognition of the 1906 race massacre and those who um, gave their lives so that we may uh, be here today together. So, and, and do have a very uh, blessed and happy holiday. Get some rest. Take care of your mental health and your physical health. Uh, uh -huh. and come back. Come back into twenty twenty two renewed. <laughs> right. That's all right. right. <laughs> Thank you all. Good seeing everybody. everybody.